Hey, what's up everybody? NEXT here coming to you today from the Karnak Temple Complex here in Egypt. Egypt's largest temple complex and it would have been the world's largest temple complex if it was not for Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Here at Karnak in this video, which is a 360 virtual reality video, so if you're watching on mobile, you can move your phone around. If you're watching on a computer, you can essentially use the mouse or the keyboard to shift the screen around. But the best way this video is viewed is using a VR headset. Um, if you have no problem using one of those, such as the Oculus Quest. So what I'm gonna do in this video is run through briefly the evidence for the lost ancient technology theory. This is what lost ancient technology theorists will use to support their narrative. Um, you know, there's a lot of debate over its very controversial subject. There's a lot of videos out there debunking lost ancient technology. And, you know, there's things that we can definitely prove. But I think there are some aspects that still remain a mystery that we don't have resolved. Anyway, all I'm going to do today is take you through the most salient pieces of evidence here at Karnak and walk you through Karnak so you can see exactly where they're at. So if you ever come here, you can find them for yourselves. We're gonna start over here with a broken obelisk of Tutmosis. And this is our first example. If you look over here, I shall bring the camera closer. You can see Pet, the hieroglyph for a sky here. The obelisk is on its side. And this would have been for a plate. But what you wanna take a look at here is these tiny drill holes which appear to be tapered. So they're going in, you can see that there. This is very fine, I'll bring the camera up close. And so just keeping in mind that this is granite, which is not indigenous to this area here in Luxor. This would have come all the way from Aswan, the Aswan granite quarry. Granite, obviously a very hard stone. So to achieve this sort of very fine drill hole, you know, at a tapered angle is one of the pieces of evidence that lost ancient technology theorists will propose. Of course, this is gonna be all open for discussion and debate in the comments section. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on how these things may have been achieved. So I'll take you to the next piece of evidence now. This is perhaps the most famous part of Karnak here. I did another 360 virtual reality video on my channel explaining the esoteric number symbolism encoded in this part of the temple. You can check that out here on my YouTube channel. They're doing some work here. They actually moved one of the statues recently. Here now. And just over here by the obelisks is where the vast majority of evidence can be found. This one over here, the tallest standing obelisk in Egypt, which is the obelisk of Hatshepsut. Let's take a look at this one. So our next piece of evidence is actually right over here where you can see the granite connects. We have the two different types of stone, obviously. 
So it would appear as if the granite may have been the original stone and then this was added later. You can see that the titles of all of the captives, these are all the foreigners, the nine bows, the foreigners of Egypt with their hands tied behind their back, each with what, look, it's not a cartouche, it's just a title. It looks like a cartouche because it's an oval, but you can see how it's continued here. Two pieces of stone come together, but the evidence is right here. This line, this cut, you can see is very precise, a very thin blade coming all the way through here and going all the way down. And there's another example on the other side over here. So the question is, when did this happen? What we can likely say, you know, a lot of times people will try to push the date back on these things and say that it's before the dynastic Egyptians. I don't think that's the case, especially here where you clearly have new kingdom hieroglyphs. So for example, you can see what's known as a wa scepter. Down here, it looks like a tuning fork. They wouldn't have added the hieroglyphs after this incision, after this cut. So this cut had to have taken place after the New Kingdom, or maybe during the New Kingdom, or after the New Kingdom, or in the late period, the Greco-Roman, you know, Ptolemaic period, or even much later. Maybe even, maybe it's even modern, we don't know, but you can see a very thin cut going through the Wa Scepter. All the way up there. And then over here we have an example of a tubular drill hole inside here. This would have been used for the door. You can see there's a portal here. So this likely would have been a locking mechanism. But if you look close, you can see that there. But the best example perhaps is right over here, actually. Sorry, right over here. This is the one that's a bit more challenging for a lot of people to find. The way you find this is you just remember the Holy of Holies is here. You have the North and the South uh, papyrus and lotus symbolism here. You just walk through this set of doors, this entrance rather, this portal. And this stone right here, you can tell because it lines up with the obelisk. You know, a lot of people know about this because they've seen pictures, but they don't know how to get here. So just remember, it's right before the Holy of Holies. But this one is really remarkable. This had to be a pretty big uh, drill, uh, drill biz. You can see, uh, I mean, this is, it's really mind boggling. The reason, aside for the size, I mean, it's huge, but look at the lip here, the edge, how it extends. It's a very thin blade, extremely thin blade cut into the granite stone. Get a close up of that there. Absolutely amazing how they achieved this. I can't tell you. I have no idea why they created these lines here. I don't know either. But yeah, again, you can see the thin blade goes underneath. Here, I'll stick the camera in so you can get a close up. Absolutely amazing. But these are the most salient points, if you will, for the lost ancient technology theorists here at Karnak. For those that want to make a case for lost ancient technology. Again, there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube that are by experimentalists who put the effort in to try to explain some of these things. Some videos better than others, um, but there are again still mysteries that remain unexplained. If you have an explanation for how the ancient Egyptians accomplished this, let me know in the comments down below. But I do want to point out the importance of the other one, the second to last one that I showed you, and how the cut goes through the hieroglyphs. Ancient Egyptians likely would not have fashioned hieroglyphs with that incision already in the stone. That had to have taken place after the fact, and those hieroglyphs are certainly New Kingdom. So we know that that happened at least during or after the New Kingdom, and could even be modern. This is another interesting piece over here. So we're right out back at the Akmenu. This is Tutmosis, is a, a festival hall. They refer to it as Festival Hall. The Akmenu is actually really 
the ancient mystery school i talk about that in my uh, one of my other videos on karnak but anyway this piece here i've always found fascinating out this it almost looks like some sort of coating on top of the stone and then the way that it's all damaged how does granite take a look at this how does this happen to granite I'm no geologist so you know I can't tell you with certainty but I'm wondering was this was this burnt this is red granite by the way this would have come from Aswan I wonder if this is like a fire setting technique maybe a fire happened here i don't know anyway i hope you enjoyed this video if you didn't looks like we have the place almost entirely to ourselves if you do a 360 nobody's around right now anyway i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please consider giving it a like if you're new to the channel and haven't already done so, please subscribe for more 360 virtual reality videos. And I have tons of non-360 videos as well. Vlogs and informational videos and content will continue to come. So please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And if you do like the video, I would recommend watching the next two videos I put up on the screen because these are the videos that YouTube thinks you should be watching next.